Greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. It's been a while. I want to say salutations, thank you, and everybody for following me, uh, liking, favoriting, and spreading my videos out there. For all my future nurses out there that's gonna graduate soon, congrats. Keep rising and grinding and never sleep because someone else is gonna want it more than you. So now that that's said, let's go ahead and continue what we want to do. I had a very good question about focus assessment. So yeah, I'm gonna do it all on cardiac right here. So let's just say a patient came in, right? You have four or five patients. You have an already patient load that's pretty heavy. So you wanna do a focus assessment on a cardiac patient. They came in and let's just say you did the lab diagnostics, you know, the doctor's orders already. So they're already on a 12 lead, on, they did the EKG, they did the labs, troponins, cardiac enzymes, and then they did an x-ray. But as a nurse, you need to do your focus assessment. So you walk in there, you wanna make sure they're alert orange times three, person, place, and time. You wanna make sure that they're compliant and they're able to discuss what's going on. So you're gonna look at the tag, look at them, make sure that's the right patient, you know, and discuss what's going on. The very first thing you wanna do is asking questions. A lot of nurses forget to do that and just do assessments. So you wanna make sure, hey, what are you in here? What happened? What was the cause of this? Is there chest pain? Was the location? Does it radiate? Is it stabbing? Does it, uh, you know, was it, is it burning? Is it crushing? You wanna ask them what the signs and symptoms were before you came in. So you know of an onset. Were you emulating? Were you walking around? Were you, you know, running when this happened, when your heart all of a sudden just started hurting? You gotta ask, ask these questions so you kinda know and have a baseline of what's going on. So while you're going there talking to them, you wanna look at the O2 sat, if they're on oxygen, make sure the O2 sats are above 94, 90, I mean 95%. You wanna look at the blood pressure, if the systolic is high, diastolic's low. You wanna look at all that good stuff. You just wanna make sure you do a thorough assessment. So after you're asking these questions, you wanna ask them, hey, you have a family history of heart conditions. I mean, does someone in your family have AFib? Uh, do they have you know, congestive heart failure? Um, maybe die, if someone in your family diabetic, you wanna ask all these type of questions. And you keep continuing asking these questions. Are you a smoker, are you a drinker? Because those can lead to basic, well, smoking can lead to basic constriction, which causes high blood pressure. Also drinking over time, two to three times a day, two to three times a week. How much do you consume alcohol? Five times a week for me, just kidding. But anyway, you wanna keep asking these questions. What's your diet like? Do you eat McDonald's all the time, high sodium, which can lead to uh, high blood pressure. I mean, McDonald's and what they eat, then you need to know this. Do they exercise daily, twice a week, three times a week, once a month? And of course, they're all liars, patients are liars, until proven innocent from labs and diagnostics. I know it's sadly to say, but you can't always go off a patient's word. But in this case, you kinda of just have to have a baseline and go with these questions, and you keep asking them. So, like I said, I mean, are they nauseated? Are they diaphoretic? Any numbness on the right arm? Chest pain? How did that feel? So you're asking them, and while you're doing this, you're looking for the symmetry in the, in the neck. Is it, is it normal? Is it findings? There's no abnormal, you know, pulsating arteries, the carotid artery, which you're gonna look at, get your stethoscope, and you're gonna go ahead and listen to it. You know, you go ahead and listen to breweries, to murmurs, to thrills, anything like that. The other thing you're gonna look for is JBD. For all you future nurses that might not know what that is, jugular vein distension, you're gonna go ahead and put the position of the patient in a supine position. They're laying down flat, and that's normal to see jugular vein distension. Check this out, this is how it looks, ready? I'm gonna hold my breath and you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it distended, watch. You see those hanging out? Woo! All right, now that I'm a, before I lose consciousness, that's what happens. You're gonna see for vein distension. And if that occurs while they're laying down, it's okay. But if you put the head of bed up 30 degrees, which you're supposed to, and it's still distended, that's an abnormal finding. That basically demonstrates and shows that the patient has congestive heart failure or just fluid overload, which is kind of the same thing. So you wanna look at that and kind of work your way down. And that's when you work your way down to the lungs. You wanna to listen to the correct position of the stethoscope. You don't wanna just go ahead and put it on the patient and just be like, psh, 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 psh. okay, you're fine. Oh, I've heard some crackles, wheezing, whatever, so forth in your lungs. And in your heart, I heard some murmurs. No, 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 that's horrible. So you're gonna work your way down. I'm gonna put the camera down a little bit so you can see. You're gonna work, and you remember this on stuff nursing students say on my last video. So you're gonna go to the second intercostal. Remember guys, as an RN, you need to know this. So second intercostal and towards the sternum, that's gonna be the aortic valve. So you're gonna work your way down, boom, boom, right here. And across is the second intercostal and that is the pulmonic valve. And so you work your way down to the herbs point. That's the third one. And that's gonna be the third valve. And that's gonna be on the third intercostal towards the sternum, okay? Now if you guys don't remember this, just kinda write it down, go with me. And on the fourth, you're gonna skip you're gonna skip the fourth intercostal and you're gonna go straight to the fifth intercostal. That's the tricuspid valve. And that's gonna to be towards the sternum. And the fourth intercostal, one, two, three, four, towards the sternum. So you have to have the right placement on the stethoscope. And then this is the PMI, which is the point of most impact, is the fifth intercostal. And that's gonna be, do you guys remember? 
Yes, no? Mitral valve. So that's gonna be the point of most impact. That's gonna see and let you know how things are going around your heart. So you basically listen in around the heart and everything. So I'm gonna kind of put in the description on the bottom where the locations are. But anyway, that's where you do your focus assessment. You're gonna keep working your way down. But while you, as you're listening to the heart sounds, you might as well listen to the lung sounds. Because if it's fluid overload, you might hear crackles, wheezing, maybe coarse crackles, fine crackles, whatever. So you want to listen to the lung sounds too, but that's a different video. So you work your way down. You're also going to look for edema, generalized edema. I had a patient who had generalized puffiness and she had plus three edema. Her whole face, abdomen, arms, legs, all extremities had plus three, plus four. And the reason why that happens is fluid overload. You have generalized edema. Sometimes it's going to be in the bilateral lower extremities. So you want to make sure you assess plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Uh, most of the patients that have heart issues will have edema on their lower extremities. If not, that's actually a good sign. But um, you're going to assess that and you're also going to go ahead and listen to pulses. You're going to check pulses. How's the color of the patient? Is it pallor, mottled? I mean, is it uh, pale? You want to look at all that. Pulses, radial pulse, brachial pulse. You want to look at the femoral pulses, fetal, pedal pulses, all that good stuff, guys. And you continue looking at it. You ask them, hey, did you gain a bunch of weight, five, 10 pounds of weight in the last two, three days? That's abnormal finding. So you want to go ahead and continue that. And of course, they might be on a fluid restriction, maybe 1,500 uh, fluid restriction where they can't have too much water so they can, so they can go into fluid overload. So you can do a focus assessment, do all that. Hopefully that breaks it down. Um, like I said, you're going to listen to murmurs, you're going to listen to uh, bruise, you're going to listen to thrills, you're going to heart sounds, jugular vein dissection, you're going to look for, you're going to see if they're alert oriented, you're going to ask them what the abnormal findings are, shortness of breath, nauseated, diaphoretic, what is the onset where they're exercising, you want to get a baseline how the blood pressure is, what medications they're on at home, um, any history of uh, heart issues, do they drink, do they smoke? Now these questions, this is you're going to know over time as a nurse. You're not going to learn in a day, ladies and gents. So anyway, hopefully that helps. Breaks it down like a fraction. Like I always said, rise and grind, never sleep. Stay hungry because somebody else always wants it more than you. Stay on top of your game. My fellow YouTube nurses, I'm out. I got to go answer that. All right, peace.